wikibon.org, and we're here with Colin Mahoney of, of Vertica. Again, Colin, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here. So uh, this is my second year here. A big, big change, pretty noticeable change from last year. What's changed in the marketplace? The whole we talked a lot about big data. We met on an airplane, actually. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, gave, you shared with me some of your insights. What's changed in the last you know six, nine, twelve months, other than the fact that you guys got bought? Yeah, well, so I think one of the one of the things that I've seen change in this market is that uh, people have recognized that uh, quote unquote big data is everywhere. Uh, you don't have to be a Fortune 50 size company to be dealing with it. Everybody wants to leverage information, and I think we all know what it can do from a competitive differentiation if you can leverage data in in near real time and make decisions on it that can affect your business it has huge implications. And so I think data's always been there. And uh, what's different now is that people really understand the value of that data. And I think secondly, the cost of storing, managing, and analyzing that data is, is just dropping dramatically. So on the one hand, you have a cost curve that's going down and you have a value curve that's going up. And I think in between there is where everybody sees the value. And so um, there's a lot of activity going on. Mike Olson was just making the point that he sees the, this whole Hadoop movement as incremental value creation. He doesn't see it as a, as a, as a cannibalization of anything uh, transaction oriented. Do you see it the same way? I do. I really do. I think that um, the, the transactional systems uh, remain. There are still many transactional systems, many what I call structured data systems that are outputting structured information and, and inputting that as well. There's so much other information that's coming in that, frankly, I think was difficult to capture, and that's where Hadoop plays a huge role. It's, it's really easy just to place the information on the HDFS or on the Hadoop clusters, and then you have all the flexibility of the different types of analytics that you can do with it. And so what Vertica sees is really where those two things come together. You know, we have con connectors to Hadoop, bi-directional, and I think if you really want to harness the value of information, you need all of the information. You need a 360 degree view of that information that's unstructured, semi-structured, structured data. Yeah, so somebody tweeted out today, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe Hadoop gives me a 360 degree view of the information and then and, and, and it's, it's not like an enterprise data warehouse potentially. So talk about that a little bit and what role you guys play there. Well, I think one of the, one of the most important factors for getting information out is the, the ecosystem of tools that can connect to any data source, whether it's an enterprise data warehouse or it's Hadoop or it's something else. There is a rich set of ecosystem BI tools, frankly, that everybody's using to ultimately output the visualizations. There's also companies here like Datamir who have some next generation solutions that run on Hadoop. But I think that that's a huge part of it, being able to have the applications that are written to analyze and report the data communicate directly with, with Hadoop. And to a certain extent, that, that sometimes lack of structure on some of this data can create challenges because a lot of those tools were made for SQL as an interface and uh, it's not there. But that's coming. Um, and I always think there's going to be a lot of other sources of data. And what we as vendors have to do is make those connection points between all these different pieces of infrastructure seamless so that you can use the best tool for the job but you don't have to go through the pain of integrating everything. And I think that's the direction that uh, we and many others in this space are trying to move towards. We had Daniel on from Yale, Daniel Abadi from, from yeah. Yale, and uh, he, he told us basically he got sick of watching Stonebreaker start company, so he decided <laughs> to start one. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, but so, you know, a lot of interesting innovation there. But um, one of the things I want you to talk about is, is what's different about Vertica. What impressed me when we met on the plane is you shared with me, you know, your guys' dogma in a way. I mean, it's, you have a really sh solid philosophy around what the right direction is. And, and I mentioned Stonebreaker. He obviously was, was pretty influential in that direction. But talk a little bit about your perspectives uh, around um, your fundamental architecture. Yeah, so when the company was founded in 2005, we, we saw the data tsunami that was happening. And on the one hand, you look at a, a data CAGR of 40%, but you look at IT budgets that are growing between 2 and 5%. And that was true back then. It's probably even more true now. So something has to give. You can't have that much information with budgets the way they are. Meanwhile, most of the traditional database technologies that were out there 
they were created for OLTP environments, transactional environments. They weren't created for analytics. So uh, the premise of Vertica was to design something from scratch, a purpose-built analytic platform that can handle both the volume of data, the, the real-time nature of analytics, and the scale of big data. And we wanted to make it sort of uh, big data for the masses, something that's very simple for not just programmers and PhDs to be able to work with, but really for anybody that's been trained with SQL, leverage this platform, but also fix a lot of the inherent issues with traditional relational technology around scalability, around flexibility. So we put together a platform that I think um, is very unique when compared to a lot of the other database platforms out there. And so it was, it was primarily SQL based for the first four versions and then in 5.0 we introduced a software development kit and we support procedural programming that leverages the parallelism of our platform. But again, all of that is handled automatically, the compression is automatic, so you don't have to deal with a lot of the, the hand coding that you might on some other type of platform. What are we expecting from you guys this year at HP? Because obviously HP had bought autonomy, Yep. and you guys were in that special group with, uh, with uh, Leo and uh, Shane Robertson. He's left the company. Where's everything shaking out now? Are you going to be in a division, your own division? Can you share? I mean, you probably can't, but I'm yeah, I can't. So to, you know, yeah. So I, I can't <laughs> share too much. But what I will tell you is, you will start seeing a lot of information very soon come out on on what we have. And frankly, I think what HP now has is one of the most robust data management platforms in the world. Frankly, I think one thing that's very unique about HP's strategy, if you look at what they've brought together, they didn't say let's go and re reinvent the old stack. Let's go and get this type of vendor, that type of vendor. What they did do is they said, where is the growth coming from? What are people doing today? And what are they going to be doing tomorrow? And I think you can imagine some of the use cases where there is a lot of unstructured data. And you need to go through that data and understand the meaning of that data. It's not easy to do. But then when you understand the meaning of the data, now you can categorize, classify that data. Let's put it into an environment where now it does have structure that can actually report and analyze that structure. So it really takes uh, both of those things. In many ways, it's similar to some of the things that we're talking about here at Hadoop World. So what I like, and of course I'm biased, but what I like about the approach is let's not reinvent yesterday because the world doesn't look anything like it did even three years ago today. Let's look at today and where we think it's going to go. And I think yeah, that's we heard from Mike Olson just you were you were listening about how disruptive and how it's really not taking away from anything. This new marketplace, it's plowing new ground, new the fields are being plowed. So it's not really cannibalizing like MySQL or JBoss did. The the Hadoop movement is about going side by side. So so it's interesting. So that you guys play in all that legacy area at HP. So we're interested. So when you're ready to tell, tell us, yeah, please yeah. share with us. No, we absolutely will. Um, you know, and would love to get in the cube and, and talk about. It. I think you hit it on the head when you think about uh, this company from a services perspective, converged infrastructure hardware perspective, many applications that HP has, Vertica, Autonomy. There, there is a lot of uh, certainly technology, wonderful people and solutions that can get pulled together. And frankly, yeah. the biggest disconnect I see in this industry right now is I, I go out there and I meet with a lot of other vendors and I meet with a lot of customers. And on the one hand, I meet these lines of business and they have these grand aspirations for what big data can do for them. And then you will also meet with a lot of the people on the ground who are working with data. What's missing is this huge middle ground where people are taking the business use case and the technology and they're really figuring out how to maximize what the two can do for one another. And I think that's where these solutions and some of the glue that's coming in yeah. is going to be so important. There are not a lot of business use cases that you hear around big, everybody says big data, monetized data, and then you say, okay, let's double click on that. What exactly are you doing? A lot of people can't answer that. I think we have over 500 customers that are answering that question every day. We're creating more material around it, and I think well, the our speculation because we've been speculating because the whole autonomy thing and going on for you know months, and our, our speculation is quite frankly we're bullish on HP. We think HP's got all the elements in place that you just kind of get your story together. It's like okay, it's like redesigning you know the suit that hangs together, which pants to put with the jacket and shirt. So you know we 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 think you guys have it there. So you know, cloud same thing. Although OpenStack is you know we're questioning that, but. 
in general, HP's poised. Yep. Um, so we're curious to see who's the leader, what the story is, and the products, of course. Our line on HP, I just uh, shared this. Uh, John, you coined it again. HP, all, all steak, no sizzle. So it's like, okay, you've got the ingredients. Now you've got to start to bring it together. And you know, It's going to take some time. Meg just came on, right? She needs a little time to well, digest everything. She made one good decision to keep the PC division. Yeah. We were happy about yeah, that. We're, it's and, uh, yeah, we're so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, you know, there's not a lot I can comment on. Yeah, one, one thing I can tell you is that you know, the, the steak sizzle comment, Vertica has a long history of announcing things six months after they've been out in the market <laughs> in production. And on the one hand, you could say from a, from a marketing perspective, that's terrible of Vertica. You guys have so much, you have the customers, tell the stories. But I'd much rather have that than the other way around. Because yeah. I think water is quickly finding its own level in this industry. Yeah, and yeah. we want people to know that we have real solutions. We're solving real problems and we're creating real value. Yeah, the noise is gonna, the noise is gonna fall away. When the when dollars start getting the table, which they, this is the proof that it is here yep. at uh, Hadoop World, is that it's not just about Cloudera now. It's an ecosystem of vendors who multi vend. It's the classic multi vendor situation, which you guys know a little bit about. So well, yeah. and that philosophy has served HP really well. I mean, obviously, you guys score very very high in all the you know customer delight surveys that we look at and, and so forth. So you know, you got a very loyal customer base. They're sticking with you. So you know, I, I, we we buy that. Um, What's your take? I want to talk about the, the competition that's come in. That's one of the other big things that's changed in the last 12 months is you've seen you know, EMC partner up with, with, with MapR. You see Hortonworks now. We're going to have them on the queue a little bit later. Yep, yep. Um, what, do you, what do you take on that? I um, mean, you guys have, have done your own you know, Hadoop connectors. I think we've talked in the past about you guys just taking the core of Apache Hadoop code. Um, so what do you see as the competitive landscape? What does it mean to you guys? What's your angle on that? So from, from the Vertica perspective, uh, we partner with um, a lot of companies in the, in the BI space, in the ETL space, and we have a very robust partner ecosystem. It's the same thing now that we're seeing play out in the Hadoop world. And we think that so long as this industry doesn't get fragmented, which I think would be a, a disaster as it's just ramping up, uh, that's a very good thing. Having different competitors work on, on on product in a certain market. So our philosophy is let's work with as many of the companies in the space as we can. We do uh, work on our connector ourselves, but we work with vendors like Hortonworks, we're Apache, obviously Cloudera, um, and we will continue to do that. We also have a lot of our own initiatives around expanding what we do on, on top of Hadoop. We came out with the Vertica Community Edition. Uh, we announced that about a month ago. Um, that's something that's very different for us, but it, it ties very well into this space where we give away a one terabyte license on three nodes of Vertica to anybody that wants it. So anybody that wants to sign up can go to vertica.com slash community, and there's the quote unquote free version of Vertica. And we really believe that our biggest challenge to scale is just letting more people know about what we do. And I think that's true of many vendors that you're seeing here today is we got to get the word out that there are solutions to help people as they analyze and monetize this data. So uh, all of these vendors, from our perspective, form a very important ecosystem. Uh, we have no plans to do our own, say, distribution of, of Hadoop, which sounds like what you might have been referring to. We were joking to that yeah. uh, SiliconANGLE announced the Hadoop distribution a couple months ago, back, back in the yeah, day yeah. when everybody was doing it. <coughs> so. We're actually going to announce yeah. an HBase implementation of something actually <laughs> yeah, yeah, real product. product. That was just a joke before. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, now, there's yeah. So you're not going to package your own distribution. Uh, Hortonworks clearly is not a fork, right? Um, we would agree with that, I presume. Yeah, as far um, as I know, pure Apache. Yep. Yeah, it's pure Apache. EMC Greenplum, different story. I mean, that's different and, story. And, and you could say the same about Lexus Nexus, right? I mean, yeah. It's, you know, those well, are those are strategies that would be a fork if they took off as a de facto standard. Yeah, and I think frankly, the the you know you look at companies like EMC where you were saying this is mostly incremental. I think companies like that actually have the most to lose. If storage is your business, the one thing that Hadoop is doing, HDFS specifically, is it is taking storage share. And if I'm EMC, I think you know yeah, I got to work really about hard about that and worry yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas for analytics and databases and those sorts of things, yes, they cut into part of that market not nearly as pronounced as some of the storage. Well, and hence the Green Plum acquisition and the, probably the strategy to, to go proprietary. I mean, there's, there's a logic behind so that. So yeah, I just got a Facebook works, text that uh, Bill Schmarzel's watching, so he's like, I'm, we mentioned Green Plum. 
Yeah. Like, I'm watching. That's, <laughs> Hi, Bill. <laughs> we cover all the bases. Yeah, I wish you were here. Um, you know, for HP, it says you want to watch out for your storage. Uh, that's Vertica. It's not the storage division. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so you've got this new competitive landscape emerging. I guess that's you know, the, the consensus amongst uh, the Cloudera executives that we talked to is that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, if we didn't have that competition, we'd sort of be wondering uh, what's wrong. How come nobody's jumping into this space? Yeah, I mean, that's. I, I would love. I, I wish that we had no competition over the last five years with Vertica. But frankly, I think that the entire market and what I tell customers all the time is they are so much better off. You look at the price per terabyte of database systems today versus where it was when Teradata was the only game in town, and their prices are coming down, down, down. Why? Because all of us are driving their prices down. And as a, as a customer, that's, a, that's exactly what you want. As a vendor, maybe not, but it's a lot easier for us because we didn't have this huge incumbent installed base. So we're happy to do it. The com competition has made us better. I think yeah. we've made it better, and that's playing out in it's the whole It's good for the industry. Community. Competition great forces for the industry. alternatives, no lock-in, although everyone wants to lock-in, but I mean, people want choices. Customers don't want one vendor dominating. That's right. So, okay. Colin, thanks so much yeah, for coming thank inside theCUBE. Thanks for having your support. Yeah. Congratulations. Can't wait to hear the story. Thank you.